that thing has become pretty similar with your life with the Dan wagon. You know what mm. I mean? Whenever you strap that thing and you're like an Amish fella and you got a horse up there oh, yeah. and you're riding them. You know who you rode this off season? I don't know if you remember this or not because it's something that I assume you've kind of buried <laughs> deep down inside. Smart. Not to bring up, but the people on the internet certainly remember. Justin Fields was supposed to be an MVP candidate. His Chicago Bears team was supposed to take a big-time jump. Aaron Rodgers, the big bad wolf, no longer in the NFC North. This team stinks. They, Terrible. They're crumbling at the scenes, behind the scenes, at the at, in, on the football field, worse than they looked last year. They had the number one pick last year. Yeah. They earned the number one pick last year. It was the worst team in football. Justin Fields looks nothing like he looked last year in the good moments. He only looks bad. Are they dead? What happened to Justin Fields? In the Dan Wagon, you for the wrong river. Oh, the Justin Fields that. one was not the right one. No. You should have just parked that thing on the side and pick somebody else, pal. You're a loser. <laughs> um, all right. Oh. <laughs> no, I love you. Uh, so, Justin, so he, one, I always thought the Bears were still going to be a bad football team this year. Oh, okay. I was adamant about that. How's guy going to win an MVP oh. on a bad football team? That makes no sense. Let's go backwards to go forward. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I literally picked him to last in the division. Um, I said J- Justin would play MVP caliber football and never thought he would be in the conversation because gotcha. the team wouldn't be good. Uh, Justin's not playing good. There's no, like, I obviously missed on that, that kind of projection. A- am I surprised that it's been this bad? Yes. Here is what I'm telling people. The Bears right now offensive tape is god awful oh. and it's not Justin at the very front of it. If you watch their game versus Kansas City yesterday, multiple times blocked Chris Jones one on one. God forbid we double team Chris Jones. It makes absolutely no sense. So, we let, let, let's start right there. Every play offensively should start with what the protection is. Like who is the big like tonight in my game Every game, every place, where's where's 99? Where is Aaron Donald? And how do we make sure that he doesn't wreck the game? The Bears did not do that with Chris Jones. So that that is not on Justin Fields. Number two, one designed run in the first three quarters. Yeah, yeah. One designed run. So, Again, we, we could sit here and say, well, Dan, why does – one designed run. So that is not on Justin Fields. Um, did, did we see the three dropped go routes? Or deep balls, one DJ Moore drops. That's probably for 50. Right. How about Chase? How about Chase Claypool? Chase Claypool give down. Me give me that. So, so three drop. And if, and, wow. and Pat, honestly, Chase. if we if we catch the deep ball to DJ Moore on the very next play, Justin throws an interception, tipped ball, trying to force the in route. Would not he? Just I just I look at the, the Bears tape and I go, it's a disaster. Yeah. And it's really hard for me. To sit here and say, man, because it's hard for me to sit here and Justin Fields stinks. I'm not paid to tell people that this person stinks or not. Like that's not – I don't – at least my opinion, I, that, I don't believe that that's my job. My job is try to figure out like why things are happening. And I think it's real easy to say, well, like, well the player just stinks. Does he or is he constantly put in positions of weakness? Is he constantly put in positions where not only he but that offense is going to struggle? Now – it, when moments present themselves, does he have to play better? Of course, sure. But I don't believe – like if you just watch the other sideline and how Patrick gets to play, it's not even in the same galaxy when it comes to how the game is called. Yeah, and Taylor Swift's there. I mean, there's, right, the whole thing. You know, I mean, there's a lot going against them in that entire – and we take the easy way out. This guy stinks just because it's overreaction Monday, yeah. and we have to do that. But those fans, I think because of what you said – mixed with the NFC North being open, Mm -hmm. mixed with another year in Eberflus' system. They had a lot of hope, and here we are three weeks in, and, I mean, $100,000 worth of equipment was stolen, you know, from the building. Security, building security. I just think it's surprising to see a player go from year one to year two, and there was significant growth in year two as both a runner and playing quarterback and delivering the football so you saw that growth, and then there was only a first-round offensive tackle taken, a signing at tailback, a acquisition of a number one wide receiver, so that an offensive guard t- is signed from the Tennessee Titans. So you're saying, oh, okay, like there is the people around the player have been upgraded, maybe not exponentially, but definitely significant upgrades. And then so you're watching a young player in a second year – of that system you're going, all right, here we go. Like this, this is the natural inclination. And you go, man, 
if this guy was getting used like Greg Roman used Lamar Jackson, or if this guy was getting used like Nick Sirianni used Jalen Hurts, or if this guy was getting used the way you know Brian Dable early on used Josh Allen, let's go. We're going to have 30 touchdowns, and it's just not happening. And I can't tell everybody why it's not happening or being used in that way. I just know it's not, and it's really re- unfair and, in my eyes, not right to sit here and say Justin Fields stinks because I don't think Fair. it's not even Pat for me. He's not being used the right way. I honestly think he's being being used the completely wrong way. Yeah, we agree. And they had him running in that fourth quarter. <laughs> yep, they're down forty something. They got yeah. him running all over the place. It's like, uh, can we put him on the sideline? Yeah, <laughs> now is not the time if we're going to stick with him. And then why right. are we doing this? Why are we doing the most risky plays? Not when we should be, but whenever the game's over for a guy, it does feel a little backwards. It does. So we need to take that back. Justin Fields doesn't stink. We don't know yet. Yeah, not sure. Well, you know who we do know about? You know who we do know about? This Zach Wilson guy stinks, right? I mean, we yeah. totally disagree with this, man. Oh, oh okay. nobody stinks. Nobody stinks. Okay. Let us know. So Zach Wilson no, doesn't not, stink. Dude. Eric, if you if you just I just got done watching that game. You, I'm not again. I'm not telling people that Justin Fields doesn't stink. That's ridiculous of me to say. Oh. I'm not telling people that Josh or Zach Wilson doesn't stink. What I'm telling everybody is this. Watch the first half and watch the second half of yesterday's game. You could vividly see the quarterback is so scared to do something wrong. He's so scared to make a mistake. He's so scared to cut the football loose. Watch the fourth quarter drive. And I, I think it's a one-score game. If not, it's a 10-point game with 12 minutes to go. Yep. All of a sudden, here's a ripped hole shot. All of a sudden, here's a bending in route. All of a sudden, here's a curl route. And the ball comes out, this and that. And it's a completely different player. I Zach is struggling, and part of that is Zach's fault. But it fe- – the, dude, Pat, the second play of the game, they run a, a zone play into an unblocked defender – they got three guys, and the Patriots have five, and it goes from second and 10 to third and 16. Quarterback sucks. Really? We're, we're running into unblocked guys. So um, I, I just think the players right now incredibly scared to make a mistake. And um, do I think that Zach Wilson is going to all of a sudden become no all pro? No. Do I think that he's capable of playing average, we can win – with football for the for this Jets team, Come on. I do. Okay, I do. I, I thought Jeez. that a couple weeks ago. I thought that a couple weeks ago. I said, you know what, Zach Wilson's the right choice here because anybody else that comes in is going to have to learn the offense. They're going to have to do this entire thing. Zach at least has a couple month head start with Hackett's offense. And he does it. But after watching him, it's just tough to think. Yeah, this guy's going to be a guy that's going to go on to win. And Jets fans are all the way back to booing his ass. Yeah, you know what I mean? they're all yeah. the way back. But that's part of this, dude. Like that. Let let me rectify my statement that I just made. Oh, thank you. Hey, this is, think- this is very big of you. Hold okay. on, ladies and gentlemen. Dan Orlovsky would like to rectify a statement he has made about Zach Wilson. Thank you, Dan. I think they can win games with Zach if they get him somehow to a healthier place mentally when it comes to, like, the fear of making the game. Way to rectify it, man. Why don't we we rectify (laughs) Waska this thing? This guy's about to lose his teeth. (laughs) This guy's about to lose his teeth. (laughs) What do you want me to tell? My flipper, he said. Go lip, go look at the game, man. Like, if you watch the guy, the guy guy wasn't watching the game. (laughs) You're telling me the guy guy was second. You tell me that guy. The guy in the second half's not the same guy as the first half. I'm just right, five minutes right. watch. Listen to this. This guy, he's all the way back. Big time fan. Everybody loves him. Fireman Ed. This is what he had to say after taking an hour of an emotional break <laughs> after the game because he couldn't take it. This is what Fireman Ed had to say about the situation. All right, I'm heading home from the game. All right, uh, gave myself to about an hour. I was getting a little nutty. Anyway, little here's nutty. the deal. Zach needs to be released or traded. <laughs> oh. All right. That's just the way it is. That's the, Listen, enough. Uh, Coach, Salah, Joe Douglas, enough. You did what you could. So it's driving. not working out, okay? You owe it to the locker room to do the right thing and go with Tim Boyle and get yourself a veteran in here, okay? The fan base was out of their minds today. That stadium was rocking, okay? They did their part. We, we had a... A, a oh. tremendous shot to win that game. Did you? The defense didn't give up a point in the second half. Okay, so listen, coach, coach. You need to do the right thing. 
All right? And Joe Douglas, it's time. Let's go. Cut your losses. It's over. Go Jets. Dan, you want to rectify <laughs> Waska this thing? Do you think that's the case? Do you think it's over? Go Jets. If Zach is broken mentally, if they do not believe that Zach could get back and somehow play. But here's my pushback to that. Environment I watched in the second half. Watch I, watched in the, I watched in the second half. I watched in the fourth quarter a different player. I watched the guy make throws. I watched him trust his eyes and cut the ball loose and not be stupid and not be reckless and not try to do too much. And, Pat, there's plays in the first half where he won't. So if you're the Jets, it's like – why won't you, to start the football game, be the guy that played in that capacity comparison to what you were in the first half? Now, if they sit there and say, well, Zach can't get back to where we want him to, sure, then go play Tim Boyle. That's fine. That's great. Maybe the offense operates a little bit cleanly. I don't – I'm not in that building every day, but if Zach Wilson can do that in the back end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter – I think it bears the question, why can't you do that to start the first quarter? And you got to remember, at his pro day. Oh, yeah. Remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rolling left. You know what I mean? He did that throw.